Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new PDCGO Unbroken Bonds video. Today's Unbroken Bonds video, guys, we're looking at a Catterday deck. And uh, this deck is a weird deck, but surprisingly enough, it can work if you get things rolling a little bit. This deck is, like, not great. It's not that great of a deck, but it's such a weird deck that actually has momentum if it gets set up. And the idea of it all centers around Persian here with Gathering of the Cat, giving all Pokemon in play on your side of the board with the attack, Catterday, basically stating that they don't need to use any energy to attack. Now, the Catterday attackers are not the best attackers. We have Meowth, uh, we have Glammeow, we have Esper, we have Esper's Evolution, Meowth Stick, and we have a Litten. Litten, though, I don't really like in this deck. So we don't have amazing attackers, they're all like really weak, low HP basics. Um, but they all have special things in common, they're all kind of about racking up damage and then trying to knock stuff out. It's a really cool combo, especially with Esper, and uh, I do have a game actually where I got to show it off pretty well. Before we get into this PC show video guys, of course, shout out to the sponsor Card Cavern TCG. If you are ever looking for any PDCGO codes for any set, whether it be um, Unbroken Bonds or Team Up, especially if you're still looking for Unbroken Bonds codes, you're trying to get more Unbroken Bonds cards, you're trying to build Reshizard or Guardian or whatever Unbroken Bonds that you're trying to build. Hey, if you're trying to build Catterday, um, you can go get them over at Card Cavern TCG. Uh, when you buy something from Card Cavern, guys, of course, you can use code LDF and you get a 5% discount on the order. Card Cavern's also got all the trainer kits, Elite Trainer Box codes, Pokemon GX Box codes for like Jolteon, Flareon, Vaporeon, Alola, Marowak, Picaram, uh, Deck Box codes. So shout out to Card Cavern TCG. If you buy something from there, use code LDF for a 5% discount. So here we go, the Catterday deck. So a little, so per, I almost said a low inversion. So Persian's ability gathering the cats makes all your Catterday Pokemon attack for free. But again, the attackers are just weird. And the attacks are kind of like awkward. Uh, we got Meow or Glammeow here with the attack Boing Boing Tail. This attack does six damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon GX or EXs. In all honesty, that's not bad. With Shrine of Punishment, that's an, that's like 70 damage. And for no energy, that's not bad. I actually think Glammeow actually is decent with this attack hated a gx for 60 is good because then what you want to do is you want to do ear kinesis with esper esper is kind of like the heart of the deck esper puts the deck together it's got the attack ear kinesis which does 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench pokemon for each damage counter on it so for example if pikachu and zekrom has 100 damage counters on it and you do ear kinesis to it on the bench then pikaram will take 200 damage in total pikaram will have 300 damage on it in turn Esper one-shots a Pikachu Zekrom with Ear Kinesis, which is just kind of insane if you think about it. Uh, Ear Kinesis might not be the best attack on the planet, but because of uh, Glammeow, because of Spell Tag, and because of Flying Flip, it's actually pretty easy to set up Ear Kinesis KOs on big stuff. All you really need is like 100 damage on a Tag Team GX Pokemon, and Ear Kinesis will KO them. So that's one of the good things. Um, Meow Stick's okay. I actually think this is a decent attacker. Uh, we do have Perplexing Eyes, which does 70 damage. The Defending Pokemon's weakness is now Psychic. So you're basically saying if they do not retreat during their next turn, um, they are going to take 140 damage from Perplexing Eyes. In turn, they're going to be taking 210 damage. So they're going to get knocked out sometimes. So Perplexing Eyes is not terrible. Um, and just sometimes getting 70 damage on something is enough for Ear Kinesis to finish them off. Um, so in combination of Glammeow, Shrine, Coco, Esper, and Meowstick, we're just trying to target big GXs, knock them out, set them up with Boing Boing, and then just try and finish them off with the Ear Kinesis. That's literally what the deck is all about, all coming together through Persian. Uh, there are some other things in the deck. I am using Ditto, obviously. Um, and uh, I also am playing Jirachi in the deck. I think Jirachi is just really good in this deck. Just having Stellar Wish to set up is really nice. A deck like this is very weird, because like if Persian gets knocked out, your deck falls apart. Um... So with Jirachi, you can set up a little bit better. You usually you want to have at least a Meowth and a Persian in play. So when Persian goes down, you can put another one in play. Uh, we are playing Coco. One of the ways I can start up a spread combo is through Flying Flip. I was considering Weezing at first. I don't really like Weezing in here. Not to mention, I don't want to play Weezing because I have other Weezing decks in mind. I still need to do a Gengar video. So like Weezing is probably the best partner for Gengar. I don't want to like have like 10 Weezing videos in a row. But yeah, I'm going with Flying Flip instead. Uh, just hitting everything for 20 is just, I think, fine enough. And uh, I am going to be running Mew because everything in here is very low HP. Picaram, Bosmosa. Not to mention, uh, Psy Power goes in combination pretty well with Ear Kinesis. And I am going to be running one copy of Larvitar with Second Strike doing um, a counter to Picaram. 
I already talked about you can get damage on Picaron, but just having the Larvitar helps you a little bit more. Sometimes that 80 damage is actually just good in general to take something out. So I just like having the one copy of Larvitar in here. That's it for the Pokemon. A pretty heavy line of Pokemon. I'm not playing Litten, which is the other Catterday card. Litten, unfortunately, um, is not very good. I know a big bite can be nice to lock the opponent, but not really. It sucks. Like, Litten's just not great. Uh, Glamio's evolution per ugly, I don't think has Catterday. Uh, yeah, per ugly does not have Catterday. He has Stray Cat Dash. Uh, it's not even that great of an attacker. But yeah, Pergly doesn't have Catterday. I don't think uh, Memory Energy and Shining Celebi work either with Persian. I haven't tested that yet, but I'm like almost 100% certain you can't use Celebi or Memory Energy with Persian if you want to go like a Perugly route. I don't think that works. Um, or with Incineroar. Like, that would be busted. Anyways, going to the items real quick. Uh, Counter Catcher, because you're going to fall behind in prizes a lot of the time. I got one Treasure to search out our Psychic Boys. Four Nest Balls. One Pokemon Communication. We have 22 Pokemon in the deck. Uh, if you want, you can maybe cut a Tapu Coco. You don't really need three in all honesty, but I still like having Coco. Jirachi and Coco are your two preferred starters. Two stretchers to get back your Pokemon. One copy of Switch for Jirachi. Two skateboards to go with it. Four Ultra Balls to search for your deck. Stadium-wise, we got two Shrines. Shrine is amazing with Meowstic and uh, Esper and Glammeow. Uh, Wonders Labyrinth. Now, this is like your ace in the hole. Wonders Labyrinth is amazing because since most of your Pokemon only need no energy to attack, right no energy at all you can slap a wonders labyrinth down and it can buy you turns where they can't even damage you and if they're not taking out these weak pokemon i, I don't know what to tell you but wonders labyrinth gives you turns to sometimes stack up damage so that you can knock them out esper supporters i'm playing a heavy line of cynthia erica lily two guzmas i would highly consider three and i'd also maybe put consider putting an escape rope just because of esper i got three choice bands uh really nice to have just choice band perplexing eyes 90 100 damage to the active for Esper is really good. Boing Boing Tail, 90 to the active is really good. Two skateboards. I am playing one Spell Tag. I wish I could play more than one in here. And the deck is kind of town space. Uh, but with Spell Tag, you can use it with your Meow Sticks. And that 40 damage also goes a long way. And I got four DCs. That's quite literally the deck. Uh, you can also run Counter Energy if you want to play like other random attackers. This is basically it for my uh, Counter Day list. Surprisingly, this deck is weird. Surprisingly enough, it can actually work if things go your way. So let's go hop some magic with it on PC Joe. All right, guys, let's go get some games with the Catter Day deck. Not gonna lie, I'm not really too excited to play this as much as I want to be because this deck probably sucks, but it will be fun to try out and just try and meme on some people with some cats. Uh, we do win the coin flip, that's good. Uh, obviously, we could play Linden in here in case of a, a grass deck, but no one's really playing grass right now outside of, whoa, what is this hand? All right, great. We're off to an awesome start. Triple Meow Stick. Don't know what to tell you. I got Ultra Ball. And, uh, we're up against Zapdos. That's a tricky matchup. Now, right, we'll get rid of Choice Band Meow Stick. I guess we'll get Meowth and just hope that it lives. And then we can go Meow Stick next turn. This ain't great, though. Our starting hand was trash. Coco might get some value in here just because Flying Flip can do extra damage to Zapdos. And then we can 80, 120 would be enough to knock this thing out with an Esper Coco in the active spot. So there is some value to using Coco here. It's just our start sucks. Our start sucks. If we don't draw a supporter, we might just lose. We can put Persian down. We can also slap down you know, stick. Hope, draw Cynthia or Lily or something and then just go from there. They might be playing a Pika Box deck, which is fine. Oh, they're actually going to build up Zerora. What? Unless they have a Thunderbound. Ooh, oh, never mind. Uh, there's a Stretcher. That would be great, but we don't need that. So we can, I guess, double Meow Stick. Sure. We can do Catterday. I think we have to. I think we have to start getting a board established. No supporter. We do find Shrine, though, which is good. We can Nest Ball for Jirachi, I guess, and then hope to draw, like, a Guzma or something. Cool. If we don't wake up and we draw an Escape Board, we could do that, too. Escape Board going to Jirachi. That's kind of clutch. Um, yeah, I could have hit him for 70. I don't really see a point in that, though. I, I'd honestly rather just try and get him a better hand. There's a Guzma. They probably have Thunder Mountain. They're going to knock out my Persian. Yes, they have it. Oh, what? Do they have a Electro Power? 
No, oh my gosh, they do. Well then, that's fine. Not really, I mean, that is pretty bad. That is pretty bad. Thankfully, we can bump that Thunder Mountain, though. That's the problem with Meowth. You just can't get him into play. Ooh, the lab. I think we play down Shrine, though, for now. Unless ball for another meow. We'll stretch her next turn and get back Persian. We can't attack him this turn because of the Catterday knockout, but we can get the shine down. If he bumps that, we can also slap down Wondrous Labyrinth, which is pretty good. My opponent really hasn't been doing much outside of, like, Lycia, Volkner, and Guzma. So they haven't been playing any draw supporters. So they haven't been getting a peek around built up, which is good. And then you go into Zero Aura. And they're gonna knock me out. Folks, this is why the Catterday deck kind of sucks. As you can see, it just doesn't work. But we can try and pull something together. Maybe. What do we draw? Ooh. Clutch. Um, I think we need a shuffle, to be honest. I think we need to get back some of our Meow Sticks and stuff. I could slap down the Wonders Lab. Sure. I do want to draw here and try and get into Persian stuff. We do get it. Ooh, we got Spell Tag. I like that. Okay, there's Larvitar. Now, Larvitar is going to be big to knock out Picaron. That's going to be one of the ways we can try and win the game. Is through Larvitar. And we'll perplexing eyes. So my opponent still would attack me. He would need an extra energy though. But that's fine. If he knocks me out, we can spell tag. I really wanted to play a Picarom down so I can put all my damage on the Picarom and then set up a second strike KO down the road. That's what I'm aiming for right now. Let's see if we can pull something together. It's possible to win this. It's gonna be hard though, because they're gonna take a prize like every turn. This is, why, this is why the deck kind of like just sucks, right? These low HP Pokemon don't do much damage. And he's going to pass. Alright, nice. This is really good, actually. Really, really good. Um, Just burn that. I'm not going to play Larvitar down. I don't want to reveal it. What do we get? We got Mew. We got a Nest Ball. That can get us Tapu Koko. And, well... Yeah, I think we just uh, perplexing eyes for 70. The next turn we can Guzma knock out the uh, Zero Aura with uh, Ear Kinesis for 180 damage. That's pretty good. Once he knocks out this Meow Stick, we can spell tag this Picarom and then try and knock it out that way. So it's possible to win this. We just have to hope the Wonder Labyrinth keeps sticking like it is. I think we're chilling for now. We'll see how this goes though. This matchup is far from over. Mew is going to be needed too to prevent him from tag bolting, taking two prizes. Might be hard to win, but I'm hoping we can maybe clutch something together. There it is. My opponent finally benches the Picaron. I can also just bring it in and Guzma that and hit it for 70. Just try and get damage on it for Larvitar. One of our goals is to get this thing ready for Larvitar. And just a pass. So not much going off my opponent. Guzma the Picaron up. Knockout Zero Aura. I like that. This is the power of this deck when you can actually get it to stick. It's a meme, but it's fun to play. I know he'll get Coco Prism Star activated, but I don't really care because we're taking a knockout on his Fear Treater. There's a Coco. There's a DCE. And next turn, we can escape board and uh, get more damage on this thing. This thing might not even be able to retreat. Ooh, a Blitzel coming down. Okay, so Strike It will help my opponent get, my, get a better hand. But again, we're chilling. Wonders Labyrinth is doing my opponent dirty right now, and I love to see it. It is satisfying to see. Really satisfying to see. Uh, slap a DC on Coco, and we will perplexing eyes. I guess I could have also set up a Larvitar, but we can't retreat this thing, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I could have set up Ultra Ball, Larvitar, save the DC. Yeah, it's fine, though. We're chilling. Opponent did have Zip Strike in their hand. They're going to finally be able to get some things going with Sprint here. Hopefully it's not too late for me. I really hope Wonder's Labyrinth sticks. I'm really hoping Wonder's Labyrinth can stick. They might knock me out this turn. We'll see if they do. Ooh. They might go with Coco. They do need a Stadium Bump and another Energy even to knock me out. 
even if they do that again we still have some big plays going on all right please do not counter my stadium do not counter the wonders lab there's a nest ball they're playing a ranguru they can get that i doubt they're playing a ranguru though oh they have two zero auras oof and they hit a lily uh oh do not counter my stadium whatever whatever happens do not get rid of my wonders labyrinth do not get rid of it oh no Ooh, they're doubles of strike a deck too interesting okay let's see what happens do not counter the stadium i guess at this point spell taking take out zapdos and then all we gotta do is finish off peak around to win the game so we do have a win condition on board hopefully do not bump the stadium please and thank you don't do it nice Wonders Labyrinth is the MVP right now. There's a nest ball. I don't even want to get rid of this hand. It's pretty good, actually. Maybe just knock him out. Though I do want to set up a Guzma Larvitar play. I think it's best just to knock him out here. I guess we can get rid of a couple Cocos. Yeah, we don't really need Coco anymore. Sure. How many? We got our counter catcher, which we're probably not going to need at this point. Um, I'm gonna get ditto just in case they do knock out Persian just in case I guess we can do Cynthia it's fine Shrine would be good too if they do bomb my stadium next turn ooh there's Guzma Oof. we are uh, pretty close to pulling off a uh, we're pretty close to pulling off a Larvitar play we just need Larvitar and DCE, and we can knock out Pikaram to win here. There's a Meowth. Not a DCE. This is pretty good, though. They do have double sprint and their supporter. Highly likely Wonders Labyrinth goes down. Even if it does, our win condition is pretty much set in stone at this point. Wonders Labyrinth bought us just enough time to hopefully come in clutch and maybe squeak out a win here against Pikachu Zekrom. We'll see. Okay, from the quad attachment, they don't have the stadium counter. Nope, they're gonna go for a double sprint. They gotta have another counter stadium. There's no way they're just playing one Thunder Mountain. They probably have like a Viridian or two. No, they don't have a counter stadium. All right. We can also hit up the Blitzel here, knock it out next turn. Get the active too, which I like. I don't even think it matters. We can also, I guess we can pile damage on Pikaram. Oh, you know what? Oh no. I could have put more damage on Pikaram. Oh, no, no, I win, right? I can just Esper knock out the Pikaram. Yeah, I have game. Right? I have game. Like, I'm almost, like, 200% positive I have game here. Does Esper knock out Pikaram? Please tell me it does. I think it does. Because we're going to do 200 damage. <laughs> what? We actually won? Oh, we had two DC's prize. Well, that would have been nice to know. I guess I didn't check the deck. Yeah, I didn't realize I had game. I was like, oh, shoot. Did I not spell tag enough damage on Pikaram? Because I just realized, wait, if I spell tag Pikaram a little bit more, would I have knocked it out and won the game with Esper? But then I'm like, well, it already has 100 damage on it. We're still going to do 100 with Esper. And oh, my gosh. I can't believe we just beat Pikaram with Day. <laughs> That's actually awesome. That is awesome. We didn't even need to use our, like, ace in the hole for the Pikaram matchup. We didn't even need to use Larvitar at all. I was trying to set it up, and then I realized we could just set up an Esper play the whole time. I kind of feel a little stupid now, not gonna lie. Um, but you know what? That was a pretty good game. That just shows the strength of Esper. Esper is a very cool card in combination when you get damage on GXs and EXs. I can't believe we actually pulled off a win there against Pikaram. Wonders Labyrinth is clearly the best stadium in this deck. Without Wonders Labyrinth, we probably would not have been able to pull that off. Because that Wonders Labyrinth bought us so many turns. That's insane. That was a great game. All right, we'll do another game with the Catterday deck here in just a moment. All right, guys, let's go do some more games with Catterday here. We got to more, mostly, like, just hope for, like, those, like, all GX focus matchups. That's really what this deck wants to see. Is they want to see, you know, Catterday wants to see a GX get flipped over. Um, I don't really know if this deck can really beat non-GX matchups that well. It's kind of tough. So we're hoping for just nice, straightforward GX decks, even though that's a bit of a pipe dream. Got an Esper, Meowstar, not terrible. We do have turn with Lily. I like that. Alright, we'll see what kind of deck we're up against here. 
Okay, never mind. We don't know what it is. Uh, we'll Ultra Ball away the Cynthia and the Countercatcher. Bit of a tough discard, especially because we don't know what we're up against. And we'll get another Esper. We could get Glamio. Also, Jirachi or Coco wouldn't have been bad. But I'm going to get another Esper. See what Lily gives us. Uh, there's Glamio. Do we have a DCE? Um, I think we just pass. We don't want to play anything quite yet. We don't know what we're playing against. I don't want to waste my choice band. Certainly, I'm not going to play the Wonders Lab down until we know what we're playing against here. Treasure. This could be a Malamar Ultra Necrozma deck. I think it is. It is. That's not the worst matchup, I would say, but not the best either. Giratina is going to be a little bit of a pain to get through, but... Uh, spread decks usually... Well, Coco, anyways, usually has a good time against these decks. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Ooh, he's got Gengar Mimikyu in the deck. Ooh. I'm feeling a little more confident about this matchup now. Let's see if he pulls off a Horror House this turn. He's going to need to retreat. Does he have a switch? No. Ooh, no Horror House. That is good. Uh, we'll slap down you... Lock down you. Choice ban you, I guess. Um, I am looking to retreat here. So I, I want to hit this thing with Glamio. So I'm going to attach an energy so I can try and retreat. Well, I am going to retreat, obviously. I know that much. I know I am going to 100% retreat. But you know what I mean. Uh, just in case I whiff a skateboard. Alright. So we'll Boing Boing Tail. Hit that Gengar Mimikyu. Get some damage on it. Tag teams are not too terrible because they're easier to knock out for us. Because once you get 100 damage on him, you knock him out because you can do 300 damage to them. So, that's pretty good. So, so far, we can do 120. Won't be enough to KO him, but, you know, things come, things go. There's a Nest Ball. Ooh, another GX. What is that? Dawn Wings? Yep. Yeah. Alright, good thing my opponent is playing a more GX-heavy Malamar deck. It could have been a lot worse. My opponent could have been playing a uh, a different archetype. Alright, let's see if my opponent's able to knock me out here. Um, or at the very least, even go into Gengar. If not, we're going to put another 60 damage on it. Or I can put damage on the Dawn Wings. But because we have Guzma in our hand, I'm probably just going to bounce hit this thing. Just keep boing boing in it. Alright. Let's see if he find. Oh no, you can just alter the moon go Dawn Wings. So it will knock me out with Horror House. That's fine. Glamio did its job. Might even just like try and Meow stick the Gengar Mimikyu. Just to get more damage on it. We do have to watch out for a Moon's Eclipse though. That can get in the way. Alright. So he's gonna KO me. That's fine. Glamio only has 60 HP. If he actually wasn't knocking out there, that'd be absolutely hilarious. So, bring in you. Ooh. Okay, so. I think we Cynthia? We're looking for, like, a Meow Stick play. If not, we can Boing Boing the Dawn Wings. That works fine, too. Okay, there's the Meow Stick. Might as well double down on Persian. Hold the choice band. And we'll perplexy nice him for 70. We can knock him out next turn with another Meow Stick. Instead of having to waste Esper. Either way, because we're going to be using the Esper line anyways. So he will knock me out with Horror... Or not with Horror House. With uh, Poltergeist. But he has to attack with Dawnwings here. Because Gengar Mimikyu is weak to Psychic. He can't keep this in the active spot. Ooh, so, I have not seen this supporter in a very long time. Uh, what do you get rid of? Nothing. Rainbow Energy in the deck. Okay, so there might be some more tricks on my opponent's sleeve here, considering he's got Rainbow Energy. It might just be for, like, Latios, Latias, maybe, if that's in the deck. Uh, looks like he's going to knock me out Dark Flash, which is fine. We are going to activate Moon's Eclipse here, which is not great. I think it's worth it, though, to knock him out. Let's see what we draw. Perfect. Okay, well, Nest Ball. And get another Esper. We'll choice Band the Glamio, I guess. This Glamio can do 90 to the active. Do this. 
There's a DC for Coco. We will Ear Kinesis. Knock out the Gengar Mimikyu. So we get Moons Eclipsed. That's fine, though. I'm not too worried about that. So we get three prize cards here. What do we find? We gotta find a Mew. We find a Coco and a Treasure. I, if I can draw a Guzma, what I want to do is boing boing tail hit this thing. Or I don't even know if I can. Um, if not, we can just do flying flip. Just hit his bench. Or we can boing boing the alternate Cosmo with a rainbow energy, which is an extra 10 damage. I actually might have to be a little cautious of Sky Scorching Light because I got all these like little 6 HP Pokemon. That's not great. So I might actually just have to waste my Glammy on now. I don't want him to knock me out of Sky Scorching, which he actually could do if he doesn't do Moon's Eclipse here. We'll see. An energy going on a Ranguru is a little random. Let's see if he goes Moon's Eclipse. If he doesn't, we'll uh, boing boing his active here for 90. It's going to be a close game. This is going to be a very close game. I'll tell you that right now. Game is going to be close. Really wish I still had... I wish I could draw Guzma here. So I could just Guzma, bring out this thing, trap it, and then go there. I know he has that in play. Actually, I wouldn't mind finding a Shrine of Punishment right now. That would be pretty good, too. Dang it, he's Moons Eclipsing me. I hate it a lot. So we can, we're going to have to hit the alternate Krosma, which could still get knocked out, so it's good. Put you down. Do this. Ultra Ball away Meowth and Mew. Grab Meowth Tick. We're not going to play it though, obviously. I'm just looking from the deck out because I am trying to find... Um, I am trying to find those Stretchers to get back those Espers. Well, Boing Boing, Tail, hit the Necrozma. So Necrozma will have 70 damage, 140. So we can knock out the Necrozma next turn with Esper. And then we just need one prize to win the game. So we'll see if we can pull that off. I don't know, actually. This might be a really close match. That Moon's Eclipse is scary. This might be a closer game than I thought. Let's pull the Paranguru. Okay, this game is going to be really close, actually, thinking about it. We'll see if we can pull off a win. I don't think we can, though, honestly. Might be too late. Might be too late. Alright. Stellar Wish. Ooh, Spell Tag. That's big. No Stretcher, though. I can't Guzma anything, just because this thing will just come in anyway. I think we just get Spell Oh no, wait. Maybe I shouldn't have Guzma, because I have the Choice Band on already. Ooh. Yeah, guys, I don't know if we're going to be able to clean out a win here, unfortunately. It doesn't look very likely. We can try, though, to do our best. This is the problem with Catterday. The attacker is just way too flimsy and weak. Uh, we are close to winning. We just need to take one more prize card and we can win this game. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't look like it's going to be possible. I don't know. We came close to winning from the looks of it. Sometimes decks just don't want to win. If we had Spell Tag, we actually could kill the Oranguru, potentially. Now I regret playing that Choice Band on. I really do. I really, really do. I didn't even bring in Jirachi. Yeah, I don't... There's no way we can win this, I don't think. Yeah. I think we just gotta take the L here, folks. There's nothing we can really do. If we had Shrine in play and Shrine was doing decent tick damage, we might have been okay. Like, even if we went Wonders Labyrinth, he would still go with, like, a Oranguru. And knock me out because he still has Malamar so like there's really not much we can do here yeah we just gotta accept our fate and then just basically go yeah we came very close to beating a Malamar deck at the very least he wasn't attacking with Giratina that's what I was worried about was like he was gonna be assaulting with Giratina which is just a lot harder to beat so, thankfully he wasn't using Giratina here unthankfully we ended up taking a pretty hard L but that is Catterday for you guys Showing off the deck a little bit. 
Um, I think Counter Day is just a really weak deck. Uh, your attackers are just way too weak, and in a format where Weezing and Ultra Krozma, Sky Scorching Light are a threat, it's not a very good deck. But you know what? When your opponent flips over a GX centric deck, Counter Day does have a decent time. As you can see, uh, the power of the Glammeow and Counter Day boys were able to take down a Gengar Mimikyu and a Ultra Necrozma. So the deck can like have some like strength behind it. It's like not a super weak deck by any means in terms of like its strength. It is deadly. It, it can take out some pretty big Pokemon pretty easily. As you can see there, we were able to tackle a Gengar Mimikyu, knock it out. We were able to take down um, an Ultra Necrozma. We were able to take down a Picarom. So the deck has strength. Okay, the deck's strength is there. Uh, Meow Stick and uh, Esper and Glammeow. It's a really good trio of cards. Um, it just comes down to how lucky you can get. I don't know. Um, we did come close to being that uh, deck. I do really wish, though, we were playing more spell tags. Looking back, I would want to add maybe a couple more spell tags to the deck. The spell tag with like Meowstic and Esper is really good, so you can pile more damage on. So I do really think that this deck 100% needs to play more spell tags to make it work. Because spell tag putting the 40 damage on for your Kinesis, I think, is really good. So looking back, I do want to add more spell tags to the deck. Outside of that, um, this deck is pretty fun. It's a cool deck. Uh, it's really weak, so you kind of have to pick your poison. Uh, if your opponent flips over a coughing, you kind of just, like, you can't really be wheezing, in my opinion. You just kind of got to take an L there. Um, literally, your highest HP Pokemon is 110 HP, and that's, that's, that's saying something. So, this deck definitely is fun to play. It's, uh, it's a cool archetype, for sure. Um, it can win games, depending on how much damage you can stack up. Um, but yeah, if I were to change the deck, I definitely would consider a, another Spell Tag or two. Maybe bump the Shrine count up. Shrine is really good. It would have been really nice in that Donwings matchup. Because if we had a little bit more damage on Donwings there, we potentially could have won. Like, I could have seen us winning that game against Donwings. Just had we had a little bit more damage on it. We could have killed the Donwings. I don't know. That's Catterday for you guys. Showing off the archetype here and what it's all about. And thanks for watching this piece of video, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe down the road to reaching 5,000 subscribers we're getting even closer guys to 4600 subs i gotta thank guys for all the uh, channel growth over the past couple weeks it's been inspiring and making me want to just keep pumping out daily content for you guys on our broken bonds our broken bonds has been a blast to play there's just so many cool decks to try out thanks for watching the video guys and uh yeah check out the sponsor card cavern in the description if you guys do order something from card cavern tcg of course guys you can use code ldf and get a five percent discount on the order so yeah check out card cavern tcg i'll see you guys on the pc video have a good day Bye bye